Okay, guys. This is what's going on here. I've got this shaft lined up here. I've got two pieces of DOM tubing cut at two inches. I have them lined up. And how I'm going to be doing this... Well, let me first explain something. I have been talking with a few other people and uh, since this pivot is so dictated based upon where the jack shaft is positioned and the jack shaft is positioned based upon how wide my engine is and in relation to the the torque converter coming out and the size of my belt and everything so everything is kind of dictated based upon the size of the engine and this size of machine is not necessarily going to be something that you guys are going to want to put a little 6.5 horsepower on. So, you're probably going to want to put something larger on here. So, in a nutshell, the decision was made that the frame of the machine in the rear end will be in the plans. How this is done is going to be up to you. How the pivot is going to be in line well, where your pivot's going to be at is going to be up to you to decide. Uh, so I'm going to be leaving what I'm doing here out of the plans, but I will be showing it on video here so you guys will know what I'm doing. What I'm starting out with is this simple little frame right here that's going to be the first connection between the pivot and the machine's frame itself. I have it measured up at 4 inches. This bar and this bar is 11 and 3 quarters inches. I will have to bevel in a round right here, or not bevel, but you know, I'll have to cut in a round right here, grind it in, so it fits the 3 quarter inch DOM tubing. This up here is going to be connected right on this corner. So I'll have to take out my saw and cut and notch it so it lays down in there so I can weld it. It's going to come down, connect to here, then those other two are going to be over, go over to the other side. Okay, now these two pieces here are 20 and 3 quarters. So they're slightly wider than this part, these bars here of the frame. You can see how they're how they stick out slightly wider. This edge in comparison with it, this edge here. That's where that three quarters comes in. These two are cut at twenty and three quarters, and these are at eleven and three quarters. I measured up four inches, put the bar on one side, measured down four inches and put it on the same side of the line as I did on this. So I didn't put it on, I didn't do that. It's like that. So now I'm going to tack this up. This is where we're at. Well, it goes into place. Brought the quarter, bought the two inch DOM in by about a quarter of an inch. No, no, an eighth of an inch. Then weld it around that on both sides. Now, put this piece of flat stock in here to make sure it stayed level while I was welding. So I tacked, tacked, welded a little bit, came over here, welded a little bit, kept going back and forth. If I would have welded just one side, it would have flexed, maybe pulled this away, or made it go that way, or that way, or whatever. So you tack, 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 weld a little bit more, weld a little bit more, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then your piece comes out relatively level. So now, I'm taking this off. And it will become time to start notching and cutting and zzz, chop, 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 chop to the point to where this lays down along here. 
All right, well, that was quite a chore, but uh, cut, 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 cut. You see, the thing is that it cut a little bit off of here, then cut a little bit off of there so it could lay flat, and then walk over and see which area was colliding. Nip a little bit off of that, lip and you know, back and forth, back and forth, so that way the whole thing would lay nice and even like it is. So, weld it up through there, weld it down through there, and stuck the wire up inside of there and welded the other side too. And I might take this bar and move it down a little bit. This one here, well, it's definitely gonna have to come off because the, you know, the driver's gonna, or the driven's gonna get in the way of it. And I put these clamps on the axle so I could pivot it back and forth, cut, 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 place it, pull it, pull it back, cut, 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 place it, you know what I'm saying? And I have the clamps on there so it wouldn't shift side to side. So I got clamps right here on the pillow blocks, or on the sides of the pillow blocks, and then clamps on the side of the DOM tubing. So, yep, still working, still rotating. Yep, not any binding. All right, now I gotta put in the bars that go from here down. Yeah. Okay, so this is what I did. These bars are gonna be for the secondary support. They're gonna support the pivot. What I did is I measured out my distance and I came to the conclusion of making them nine and one quarter inches long, okay? Then I grabbed a piece of DOM tubing, took my took my Sharpie and marked it out, making sure I still had a welded surface on the very point here. So this is nine and a quarter inches long. Now instead of triangulating it like this, which would give me a quarter inch difference down here, because remember, we're a quarter inch off of the frame right up here. I decided to go in and come from this side of the DOM tubing, this two inch piece of DOM tubing, three quarter inch inner diameter. So I'm coming out an eighth right there. But by doing so, by coming in an eighth on the DOM tubing, it sets my space from the frame at one inch down there. Okay. God, this is hard to do. It's hard to show you guys this. So by coming in one eighth on the DOM tubing, it's gonna give me one inch down there. So, I cut a piece of steel. I cut two pieces of steel with 20 inch angles plugged them and they are five and three quarter inches long from the inside of this bar the support bar here on the frame I measured up four and a half inches that's where I'm gonna take this bar line it up Magnet. Okay. Now, now that I have that on there, if I take this, cup it in there, bring it in an eighth of an inch, line it up with this edge right here, because I'm going to cut this at an angle to match this. Bring it up, clamp it. So, with that, all set up like that, I'll have to cut this, plug it. That's gonna be at an eighth of an inch. That should give me a 90 degree angle right there. So, let's do it. 
right? Got those welded into place. And uh, these welds didn't turn out as well as the other ones, but I'll have to clean them up a little bit and weld once I flip this thing upside down. Now, I'm gonna see how much binding this thing did on this shaft. Got some scratches from welding splatter on the axle here. But that ain't nothing that a little bit of sandpaper can't take care of. As long as I don't uh, mess up my pillow block bearings, tighten those things down. <laughs> but I have a feeling I'm going to have to readjust those to pillow block bearings, which is going to kind of offset this by about an eighth of an inch. Which means I most likely need to get a chain tensioner on this. That's no big deal, though. Okay. Get out of the light so you guys can somewhat see this. See that? Uh -huh. Okay. Now I have yet to cleave off the ends right there, but believe me, I'll be doing that. Okay. So, yeah. Now the next thing to do is to start is to build up my rear end frame, and I'll have to uh, see, see. This is how I protect my coffee. See that? Just a simple little sandwich bag, no Ziploc or nothing like that on it. The old school sandwich bag. Just put it right up over the top. Yeah, real simple. Uh, those. Mugs that you can buy that have the flip open lid or the rotatey thing here or whatever those fancy those fancy things It doesn't matter with those because If I get welding slag or dirt or dust or anything like that heck even though I pop it open I'm still drinking it because the stuff settles on top or it settles down into the creases well with a regular cup and You know sandwich bag over the top of it. I can just pull up the sandwich bag and take a drink. Yeah, See how easy that is? Okay, now here we go. We've got the three quarter inch tubing. Oh my God, that's all I've got right there. <sighs> now this is three quarter inch outer diameter. And this is going to be the pivete. <laughs> Come on, get in there. <clears throat> get in there. Geez, you're nice and tight, aren't you? Well, I'll loosen you up in a little while. I'm gonna have to weld the undersides here and down in here, but I'll have to do that when I flip this thing upside down or right side up. I'm going to have to do that. But yeah, that's pretty much how this is going to go. I'm not going to be putting this in the plans because this is complete and utter fabrication. This is just eyeballing everything, putting it into place. So yeah, that's going to have to be something that you'll have to, you'll have to figure out when if you decide to get the plans or whatnot. You know, buying plans for go-karts that you can put a simple 6.5 or 5.5 engine on you know, those are, you know, that, that's pretty universal. You can do that. But when you build something big like this, a lot of stuff in the rear end is dictated by the size of the engine and what kind of engine you're using. I've even seen some, uh, well, I actually bought some buggy plans a long time ago. Well, actually, no, I didn't even buy them. The guy sent them to me because I sent him a set of the plans for the Batmobile and then he sent me a set of his, uh, his sand rail buggy. And I was looking at that and in the end 
where it shows how to do the rear end. He even stated that, um, well, he has had independent suspension, but he said that uh, even in his plans, it's all going to change based upon the type of engine that you have. So yeah, I mean, it would just be best just to leave this out of the plans because this will just confuse people. People will try to build this all up, get to this point, cut the steel, and realize, oh wait, you know, I'm using a Kawasaki 750. Now I know one tough dog has a, a has a Kawasaki 750 like I used to have. I got rid of mine, sold on Craigslist. But I remember looking at that engine and it was strangely wide. You know, it was a four stroke, two cylinders, but it was it was a wide machine. Or a wide engine. It was really wide. I should ask him how wide that thing is. Because I got rid of mine, but he's got one that's exactly like it. So I should ask him how wide that is to see if something like that would be able to fit inside of here. Yeah, yeah. Tough Dog, if, if you're watching this, looking at the engine in a fashion of like, uh, let me draw this out quick. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here's a, here's, a, here's a quick drawing. Tough Dog, if you see this, um, damn. See the top one? Yeah, the, the, how wide is the engine on that Kawasaki 750? And then looking at it from the side, uh, how long is that? So, yeah. A is the top one, B is the bottom one. So if you, if you can take some time to run out to your garage and measure it out and post it below this video, that'd be kind of cool. But let me measure up to see if that kind of engine would fit in here. In this thing, as I have it set up now. Before it would, uh, okay, well, if we go right to this bar here, we're looking at 20 and a quarter inches from this bar straight back. And then height wise, before it collides with anything, well, uh, from the bottom there, we're looking at 20, uh, uh, 19 and three quarters to this first bend right here. <clears throat> so we've got this square area right here. So if you were to put something right, well, from your guys' point of view, put an engine going this way, you know, the cylinders are right here. I don't know. And then once I get the frame on here, we're looking at uh, width wise about 20 and a half. So I don't know if uh, that 750 would fit in here. It'd be a pretty tight fit. I'll tell you that much. Call a sock 750. <laughs> but anyways, guys, I'm gonna get on out of here. You guys are watching today is Sunday, and you guys are watching this Thursday. Ha <laughs> ha! Like four days late. Who knows where I'm at on Thursday with this? <laughs> See ya.